Hello, passion trainer. This is your friend Dave Gadwi. We are live every week. Every week we come live. Me and my partner in crime, Lily Ma. Hi, Lily. Hi, hi, everyone. Today is a little bit different, huh, Dev? Maybe we we can explain what's happening here with our live stream. Yeah, today is a little bit weird. My camera is not working, so I'm just going to use the picture, the handsome looking picture that I have pointing finger at people. <laughs> You know what? That's the thing about entrepreneurship. You just have to be resourceful and just run with it. Because we could have like easily canceled this live stream because like, your camera's not working. But you know what? We're dedicated and we're going to go ahead today too. There we go. There we go. We are ready to rock and roll. So for people who are tuning in this live passion trainer show for the first time, let me tell you the format of the show. So me and Lily, we come every week. We take some entrepreneur and passion trainer questions which are being shared on my channel and Evan Carmichael's channel. And we answer those questions for you to help you grow your business, identify your passion and build multiple streams of income. Just to give uh, an introduction for people who don't know me, my name is Dave Gadry. I'm the Amazon best-selling author of the book 80% Mindset, 20% Skill. I'm the passion trainer mentor. I'm the high ticket sales expert and social media expert as well. Let me introduce my colleague here. Oh, Lily, why don't you introduce yourself? What do I do? I'm a coach and a business consultant. So what I do is every single day, I work with hardworking people to create an extraordinary life and business. So that's me in a nutshell. I've done different things. I have, um, I've done a TEDx talk. I've done different corporate events. But in my heart is to help entrepreneurs build an extraordinary business. That's what I really love to do. That is fantastic. And she forgot to mention that she is sweet, she's cute, and she's bubbly. I don't know about bubbly, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I also come with amazing questions, too. All right, that is, let's, let's roll with it. So Lily, why don't we get started with the interesting questions that we have today? Okay, I think this is an amazing question for Dev because uh, you could give firsthand experience to Amaka right here. So she's asking, to become an author, should you read, read, read and write, or should you live an, in an interesting life so that you have things to write about? Mm, that's a very interesting question, Amaka. So Read, 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 yes, highly important. You know, you being an author, you know, it's very, very important for you to read a lot. Um, if you cannot read, then if you're somebody like me, then listen to a lot of audio books. So that's what I did. Now, why is it important? It's because when you're writing a book, if it is your first time, trust me, you would need to learn and model a lot of other people. When I started writing my book, 80% Mindset, 20% Skills, it was just absolute crap okay when i started writing it was just like having you know a few blogs put together here and there uh but then i just continued writing and i continued listening and implementing all the new ideas which i used to get from all the books and just book you know became better and better and better now that is first you know uh, part of the question yes you need to absolutely read the books and um, listen to audio books and then model these successful books like some of the things which I learned was you know, how to story tell, right? People buy stories and connect with stories and not just some random jazz of how great and wonderful I am or what you should be doing because, hey, I'm the expert. Now, people don't like that, okay? People like the stories. So if you read my book, you will see, and, and this is the feedback which is coming from all the readers. You know, they said that, they your book is so easy to understand so connecting so addictive that you know we just continue reading it and, and non-stop we go on reading so many pages at one shot we don't feel like keeping the book so i learned a lot from all the stories you know storytelling techniques from all the people and i mix it up with my real life experience so people feel the connect easily and relate that to their lives as well so that is just one thing which i learned and then of course i did a lot of research and i you know include a lot of success stories all thanks to my reading abilities and pulling the best out of the best and putting in the book so that's the first part of the question the second part do you have to do crazy things and then you write the book you have to be do you have to be super successful to write a book look that is a myth you know you do not have to be super successful you know everybody has their own success in their own ways so if you have a story to tell and if you have done so if you have done something which is more than the ordinary or average 
And if that is what you want to share with your audience so that either they get inspired, either they get entertained, or either they get they transform their life, then you should do it. Of course, it is really important for a writer to have some kind of success because people don't believe in what you say, but they believe more in what you do or what you did. So just to go for going back to my book story, it took me about one and a half years, two years to write a book. But if, and you, if you go to see, I could have finished the book probably in you know, two or three months, but I kept the book on hold on the back burner intentionally because my life was moving at such a rapid pace that I wanted to make sure that I capture all the small successes that I'm getting from small actions that I'm taking in the book so that when the reader reads a book, they should actually feel, hmm, well, if they can do this by this small action or these small things, yeah, I can do that as well. So I kept it on a back burner and I've added all those successes which were happening to me in my personal life on how I built, you know, small uh, from uh, YouTube, small audience to bigger audience, how I started doing coachings and so on and so forth. So, yeah, to answer your question, it is important that you include your successes that you that becomes, you know, more real to other people. But, hey, is it a mandatory thing? No, not necessarily. I mean, it really depends on what type of book you're writing as well, right? If you want to share uh, you know, somebody else's success stories, uh, that also is good. Like, you know, I'm reading Evan Carmichael's uh, book, which is the top 10 rules for success. And what he has done is he, you know, Evan has brilliantly picked the best of the best from all the great leaders and speakers and, you know, visionaries. And he's compiled a book. I'm enjoying that book. Uh, so, yeah, you don't have to be crazy adventurous and, you know, wacky to write a book as well. So I hope that answers your question. So what, what do you think, uh, Lily? Oh, that's brilliant. I love your answer. And um, I think this is um, in general about entrepreneurship is um, is it doesn't have to be one or the other. So in Amaka's situation, she's wondering, like, how much should I consume versus actually living? I think people need to do both to really draw on the experiences. And I just want to kind of um, build on what you were saying about living, living certain experiences or living an extraordinary life. I think there's a beauty in the insignificant moments as well. I think people think, oh, I need to, I need to have this like significant moment that I'm going to write about it. But there's, there's lessons that you could talk about every single day that you learn. And you could you could put it together in a little package in a book if you want to, or you could, you know, you could like what you were talking about with Evan is the uh, top ten rules for success. He basically took the most successful people and he put it together in a book, and that's and he put it together in his own unique way. So whatever the message is for whether if you're writing a book or you're creating a YouTube channel, is finding your own unique voice. And it doesn't have to be like a crazy experience, or it's a crazy experience, whatever it is. You know, I think. All in all, the fundamental has to be this for everybody is that you, whatever you put out there has to provide value for people. And, um, and coming from that place, it doesn't matter what you do, you will always succeed. That's my opinion. And that's what uh, Dev did with his book. That's why he's getting good feedback from it. Yeah, good answer. Yeah. yeah, I love it. I think from the author side, I think your answer was awesome because you went through the experience already. That's good. Okay, so Dev, what do you want to do? Do you want to take a question from the live chat or do you want to take a question from one of the ones that I have here? Oh, let me have a look if we have uh, questions. We do have questions. We have questions in the live chat. Okay, just opening my live chat now just to see what we have. Maybe let's take another question from what we have and then we'll take questions. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So I have a question from Jane. She's asking how to find right path for career and entrepreneurship. So it's both. All right. Career and entrepreneurship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you, um, I have been working for somebody for 16 long years until last week. Right? <laughs> right. Wow. Okay. We have to, we have to kind of talk about this as well. This is a big thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So for, for 16 long years, um, I probably, it's other way around. I did not choose my career. The career chose me. Like sales happened to me by luck because my brother said, hey, sales is a good place. I started with the BPO industry and I was really, really pathetic at English, right? I could not what, speak. Uh, what industry, Dev? It was a uh, business process outsourcing. Okay, okay. Gotcha. Okay. Right. So mm -hmm. that's where I started my career. And 
Why did I choose that? Because hey, that was the only thing which I could get as a you know BCom graduate, and um, I, th there was a place where people were making more money than the traditional work that everybody were doing. So I started my career there, then moved into sales. So stayed in uh, sales for sixteen years. Now I cannot suggest which career that you should choose because it has to do more to do with what is your liking and what kind of skills that you have which you can choose but if you ask my recommendation i would tell you sales is the best place to be in and i'll tell you why because anything and everything that you and that you do in life you will have to convince others on your ideas your vision the things that you want to do and sales is part of life so if it is part of life why don't you make career out of the same thing so as an entrepreneur also you would require your sales abilities to close people on your deals your service your product and your vision so sales i highly recommend and it is it has its own perks you make good money you get to travel you meet more people you understand more as compared to if you're just back in operation or admin work of course if you enjoy that kind of life no problem but I personally prefer to be in sales and that gives you all the opportunities in the world. Now, as far as the entrepreneurship is concerned, I'm a big believer of building business around your passion. If you're starting something new and if you're really passionate about it, you would be able to persevere when the things don't go as per your expectation, but because you're passionate about it, you will really, really grow in the long run. On the flip side, even if you're not passionate about something that you want to do as a business, but that business can solve a problem for somebody. And if you really feel fulfilled because of solving that problem, then yes, you can do that as well. But that is something that you have to answer for yourself. Hey, what is it that I would feel fulfilled you know, when, when I do something in terms of business? What would make me happy? And try, try and build a business around it. So as a passion planner mentor, I coach a lot of people on how to identify the passion and build a business around it like I did it. I worked on my passion for the last one and a half years, two years, and finally the point came. I said, hey, I think I need to go full-time in my passion now. So again, you don't have to choose either or. You can do both like I did for the last two years and then slowly and gradually move full-time into whatever works for you the best. It could be a job, then be it it. BP job. You know, if it is entrepreneurship or passion entrepreneurship, go for it, right? But you need to make sure that you need to be aligned to what your passion is, what your skills are, and where can you make the most impact. You know, that's most important. Don't focus on how much money can you make, but focus on how much impact can you have on others because more lives you touch, more money you make. Absolutely. It's so true. And passion is so important when it comes to entrepreneurship because being an entrepreneur is extremely hard. And I think that not enough people talk about it, like the hardships that entrepreneurs have. There are so many times like in my situation that I have gotten no sleep and it, it's hard. It's hard to do a startup. And when you don't have the passion for it, that's when most people will give up. Yeah. And uh, like you were saying, it's, it's, all, it's about creating an impact for people and touching people's lives. And that's how you actually make money. I think a lot of people are really focused on the money aspect, or they're always thinking like, will this business idea make money? And ultimately those are the people who end up giving up because in the beginning it's just a struggle. And, uh, and it's also great to keep your full-time job while you're doing a side hustle as a business. Because here's the thing, when, when you're in a financial, destitute when you're stressed out about your finances it comes out when you're working with your clients mm. and nobody wants to work with someone who's desperate because it just shows it just shows that you know i really need this sale to close because you know my family depends on it or my bills depend on it and you're not coming from a place of like really just adding value to the person and look i get it i understand that bills do come in and we do need money to live so which is why i love the idea of keeping a full-time job doing it as a side hustle with passion and providing value for people and eventually you, when you become when you're in dev situation you're making enough money in your side hustle that you could quit your full-time job and go in full-time it's going to be amazing dev you've already done so much by doing both i'm so excited to see what's going to happen when you're doing this full-time it's going to be amazing Woohoo! Yeah! <laughs> Too bad we can't see Deb right now. We can't see the excitement. 
yeah. but it's great. I mean, it's what I did too, right? I did the same thing. I was uh, working in the corporate industry for 12 years and I ended up quitting my job to pursue my business full time. And it's incredible, but you do what you can. As entrepreneurs, you have to be resourceful and you find the time, even though you have all the other things going on in your life. Yeah, you know, the interesting part, um, two things I want to talk about is, you know, you mm -hmm. spoke about the sleepless night. When you're passionate about it, you can go and sleep, you're going to have sleepless night and you will still be happy and you'll have more energy. That is one. And the second point you mentioned was don't get into business when you're in desperate mode. You know, it's interesting because I have my Care Nation WhatsApp group and passion printer WhatsApp groups as well, as you know. And I did exactly the same voice tip the other day, probably last week, that, hey, don't start a business or don't, what is the best time to be a passion trainer? I said, I cannot tell you the best time. You have to figure out, but I'll tell you which is not a best time, which is when you're desperate for money. So I think you're actually thinking a lot. Yeah, so true, Dev. That is so true. When I'm never desperate. You know, when people are desperate, people do irrational things. And uh, it, and it's not good. Like you, it's from a reaction. Oh, it's so true. It never be in a desperate mode, even though if you feel like it, still don't react from a desperate place. Uh, it's not. I can't. I can't stress that enough. Yeah, and and the other point which you mentioned is going about sleepless night. I just did a poll. Mm -hmm. I Sunday, you know, this Sunday, last Sunday, I was uh, doing one workshop for two hundred people. I was doing a keynote sharing my uh, you know life experience and how i quit my nine to five life and um i said f you to a lot of people <laughs> did you actually did you actually do that oh, you know you should you should hear the recording i i did the whole experience for f you fuck your exercise <laughs> <laughs> you have to send me that video, Dev. You gotta send me that. Uh, video. You know, you know what the fun, the worst part is the audio did not get recorded from the time I started with that that fun game. Okay, <laughs> but I'll send you the half of it. You know, maybe you know you you relate what you're doing. It's so so fun that you know I made people write down that hey, what do you hate about your job? What do yeah. you hate about your business? And they said, okay, I hate hate about the regular sales meeting. I hate about asking for leave and not getting it. So we wrote down the list. And then, you know, one guy I called the volunteer and said, hey, you got to read out this each one line loudly and we all will say, fuck you. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so funny. I have to see it. <laughs> it was really fun. I think initially people were hesitant, but they opened up. And I think maybe some of them may, may have joined also live. So, yeah, it was pretty interesting. And, um, yeah, so that, that um, day I slept only one and a half hours because I had to fly from Pune to Delhi and I was preparing the slides and preparing my speech uh, so I only slept one and a half hours I spent whole day there and I had no food since morning just had little breakfast while in the flight for almost 13 hours I did not even eat anything because I was so busy there in the workshop and despite of that you know traveling seven hours having no food for 13 hours sleeping only one and a half hours I was still pumped. Of course, I, my body was tired, but I was so excited because of the love and, you know, a lot of, you know, book signing happened, a lot of, you know, uh, photos exchanged. I mean, uh, so it was all fun. So the point is, if you're doing something, you know that life is, you know, you only get life once. Would you want to waste the life doing something which you're not passionate about? Or would you want to do something which you really, really enjoy every single moment of it? So I think you know the answer. You know, rather than just living for somebody else and working on things which is not important, focus on your passion, find your passion, and build a business around it. Yeah, absolutely. That's the best place to be. Yeah, yeah. And we're both there. Mm -hmm. It's great. No wonder we're so happy and we don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right. So let's quickly take answers. So hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Eric, sir, you start your show a bit early. <laughs> okay. Home car girl, there's nothing. There's nothing such best after 12. Do what you like. Hmm. Okay. Oh, so home car says, sir, what is better than engineering to do after 12? What is, what is better than engineering to do after 12? Yeah, I mean, what course should you go after? After engineering? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, it depends on it depends on if you love engineering. You know, I think I think the um, 
it's it's a whole debate between going to school and actually going out there and doing what you're passionate about. If um if you don't exactly know what it is that you want to do, I would just suggest I'm assuming Omkar is a is a young person. I would suggest like just going out there and living and experiencing different things and finding and seeing yes to different things that could really um figure out what your passion is. That's what I would say instead of like jumping into a different course because you're kind of going in the line of like, oh, I have to get education after education after education. I would say live a little, have some fun, and uh, and then see where that takes you. That's that's my answer to that. I'm not very, I'm not sure what specifically the question is, but that's how I see it. Yeah, yeah. So from the you know from the academic aspect aspect. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> my Gujarati <laughs> accent <really> kicks in. <laughs> <laughs> so. From the uh, formal education aspect, you know, honestly, I myself am not a big believer of formal education, so I cannot help you in that direction. But what, what I can tell you is try and get the real education. When I say real education is follow people who are really expert in the field that you really want to pursue your career, your passion, your life, be it in social media marketing, be it in sales, be it in consulting, be a speaker, author, whatever it is. You got to find the people who have been living that for a long time and were accessible. You learn from them, invest in the coachings. Look, the education industry is going through a turmoil, okay? And I'll tell you why, because we all know it, the traditional education system is not really effective. It is just producing, mass producing the labors, the blue collar labors, right? Or, or sorry, white collar labors. And um, imagine, you know, you fighting for one seat or one vacant position where there are hundreds and hundreds of management graduates you know when i was when i was graduating around 15 16 years ago that time it was on peak right everybody wanted to do mba and it had a weightage but what happened is it got commercialized and it got crowded and now there's so much competition it does not have so much value and what it lacks is the real execution strategies if you're doing it from a small institute, not an IIM, then you may not get the, the desired outcome that you're looking for, even if, you know, even after investing so many lakhs into it. So rather, you take that money, keep it in the bank, use it when you find your passion and invest in real course from real people, uh, or pick, pick up a job which is aligned to your passion and don't work for money. When you start your career, don't work for money. Work for education, work for learning. Just think that you're on stipend for next three to four years, five years, and work in a mid-sized company so you get to do a lot of things and not just get part of the you know big company and having a you know, small piece part of the process. You don't know what is happening. So I think the real experience is something which would matter the most. So again, there's no straightforward answer. You have to do a lot of soul searching. You have to hang out with people who are ambitious people who would want to grow in life and you know attend a lot of seminars and workshops and there will be something that will click okay do more right try more you're so young at your age you fail probably a thousand times it would not even matter right because you're so young you have time advantage in your side so do that and i hope uh, you know, that answers your question i think so too good great okay so i think eric also answered his question namaste rancho we love you as well. He says he he loves you as well. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. All right, Alok says, how to become a successful blogger? Alok says, how to become a successful blogger? How to be a successful blogger? Well, you just have to start blogging. Um, the most successful in anything that you do is you have to develop, uh, deliver good content. So asking yourself the question, like, are you blogging for the sake of blogging or is there a message that you want to share with the world? And again, it, you know, I, I, I hate to keep bringing in this back to passion, but you have to have passion for it. You know, it's um, do you actually want to blog because because you have something that you want to share? You want to create an impact? You want to provide value for people or are you doing it because you think that the blogging is a thing to do um, if it's just a hobby? If it's something that you just want to do because you want to just write, that's fine, too. I think um, I think people should just try different things to see what sticks. But if you want to be successful, then you need to deliver massive amounts of value to the people who are reading your blogs. And that's how you become successful. And then eventually you're going to attract brand deals. You're going to have different people trying to advertise on your site. You're going to attract the right 
the audience, but has to start with good quality value to begin with. Yeah, and no, I agree. Look, here's the first thing first. We know that most of the blogs, they, you know, they actually die within you know, a few months. The reason why, and I think Lily you know, you know, mentioned it correctly, right? Because it's not, the, you know, it's not that you're passionate about it, just that probably doing because you, know, you think that it's so cool to do and you will have more money and more audience, and then you start a blog, you know, it will phase out because you, it's not passion. So assuming that you are passionate about what you want to write, here's what you should do. Don't be a generalist, be a specialist. Look, everybody is talking about motivation, right? How are you different? You only talk about a specific aspect. Like when I started, I started of course with the motivational course and you know, all that thing, but I realized that it's already a crowded market and, and there's tons and tons of blogs there. What is it that I am passionate about? Then I figured that out and I solved some problem for myself. And then I started sharing that knowledge with the audience because I know I will connect with people who have been in my place, who have been in part of the rat race, who had no idea what they're passionate about and how to build multiple streams of income. So I decided, okay, that is the niche I'm going to go after. I'm not going to go after the big businesses, the, the brick and mortar businesses. I decided I'm not just going to stick to the motivation because a hey, motivation will phase out. I want to serve the people who are in the nine to five life, who want to have financial freedom, who have no idea about the passion, and I'll help them to transform their lives. And that's what gave me a drive, and, and I started getting positive feedback. So that brings me to a second point, okay? First, find a you know, specific niche and become an expert. Don't be a journalist, be a specialist. And then second is you need to have a feedback loop coming in. Your content has to be good and people should start appreciating it. That will give you a positive energy and drive to write more and do more most of the blogs die because nobody watches them no value is provided there's no positive feed loop, feedback loop so obviously you will not be motivated to write more so do that and don't just stick to blog okay blog is just one tool in your kitty why only blog do video logging video log is going to be huge 80 percent of the content in coming few years is going to be video so why you want to stick to a typewriter when there is an age of computer so, You're aging yourself, Dev. Do people even know what a typewriter is? <laughs> <laughs> right. So do that, okay? And now we're going from the age of blog to the voice to video and now the live stream, right? So stay up to date with the pace and just do what is really, really easy and convenient way for you to reach your audience to add value. Blog is just one medium, okay? So don't get bogged down into being the best blogger. Of course, do that as well, but focus on other media as well. So that is your question. So good question. I like it. Mm. Ronak Mora, he says that, hi, Dave, I got a question. I have found my passion, but I'm afraid. How would it turn out? Will I earn good enough challenges, failures? I might get stuck. Please share something on this. Okay. Uh, first of all, it's totally normal to feel all those feelings. We all have gone through it. I think what it is, is my suggestion is to start small. If you have found your passion, I don't know exactly what it is, try to start as soon as possible. So for example, if your passion is to make YouTube videos, for example, and you're afraid that it might fail, you might not get the views, you might not get subscribers, whatever it is, just put out a video and see how you feel. Because I think a lot of the times is that people have a tendency of making something into a huge thing when it doesn't need to be. And all this time you're worried about this perfect plan. And, and then when you actually do it, you realize that maybe that's not the thing you wanna to do to begin with. So start as, start as soon as possible and start small. And then that way, if you do fail, they're not spectacular failures. So that's my opinion. I'm always about like starting small and fast. Yeah. And then failing fast and then keep going. That's my opinion. That's really good. Look, here's, here's my take on this one. You can never fail at something that you're passionate about, provided you give a long time enough and you take massive action on micro, right? I'm a big fan of Gary Vee, what he says, the macro and micro. So look, you're passionate at the macro level. So give yourself five years, 10 years and say, hey, look, I'm going to go do this for the next five years, 10 years, and then I'll say, hey, have I succeeded? And if that is your skill, you cannot fail. Number two is on daily 
active level, you need to start from top, say, hey, this is what I want to do with my passion. My vision or my mission is to impact 10 million people. Okay, so what do I need to do to impact that 10 million people? And who are those people? What challenges they face? And then come all the way down to say, okay, how am I, how am I going to spend half an or one hour a day or, or more than that doing exactly what I laid down that will take me one step closer to my mission and do that very often. If you put, if I put that thing in my perspective, I identify that, hey, I want to impact 10 million people. Okay, who do I want to impact? Which I already gave you the profile. Okay, how do I want to impact? Okay, I don't want to just motivate them. I want to transform them. So by just giving a you know, keynote speech, it will not help. So what do I need to do? I need to give something which will stick in their head and transform them. Hey, I need to write a book. Okay, I need to write, you know, I need to do online programs. Hey, I need to build a mastermind program so that, hey, if they are inspired, I don't want the inspired to inspiration to fizzle away. I need to be there every step of their, you know, challenge so that they solve all the challenges with the community, with the group, with my knowledge and my experience, so they continue on that mission. And then I, you know, brought it down to okay, every day, what are my daily tasks? Okay, I need to do audio notes for my community on Passion Pinner WhatsApp group. Okay, I need to write one blog or article or small writer. Okay, I need to have at least one video going out on my social media platform. So I only focus on the micro and every day because I know my vision five years, 10 years from now, I will be hitting 10 million if I just stick to doing what, what am I supposed to do every day. And if you do this every day, trust me, man, if you impact more lives, money will flow. Is It, it is just your limit and belief that you fear where there's no chance of being you know, afraid because, hey, you know, even if what, what, what is the worst that's going to happen? If something goes wrong, you can always go back to the job and continue on your passion. So don't worry about, you know, just have a belief in yourself. And hey, biggest mistake people make is they stop learning and growing. So invest in your self-education, be in the seminars, workshops, read books, and be, you know, have a mentor who will help you and guide you to reduce your risk and make sure that you definitely succeed because your mentor has succeeded. Yeah. I think so too. Um, it kind of reminds me of this conversation I was having with a friend of mine yesterday. Uh, he was so focused on the how, you know, it's like the the actual procedure of like the 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 little thing, the little micro. That's what you call it. And he wasn't really focused on the on the bigger picture. It's like honestly, the procedures don't matter because it could change. You could do different things. Maybe you know you're doing a WhatsApp group right now. Maybe you're gonna turn it into like virtual reality one day or augmented reality. The the process itself doesn't matter. It's a bigger picture, and like it goes in line with what you were saying is that you can't fail when you're pursuing your passion. So you have like the whole overarching theme, and then you have all the other little small things, and then it's okay if this doesn't work. You try something else. You try something else. It's fine as long as it's feeding into your bigger mission. So I, I love that you brought that up too. Super. We got a couple of more questions. Do you have? Okay. Few yes, yes, yes. We'll get through them quickly. Yes, thank you. Great. So Sanjay Kumar says, uh, "Hello, sir. I am a network marketer. I want to be a good public speaker." Great. Well, we both have experience doing public speaking. So the quickest way to start is um, practice, 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 practice. So this is how I started off um, in my speaking: is I I had Snapchat and I did three Snapchat stories a day. So, and it's, I start off with 30 seconds. That's it. Just get used to speaking in front of the camera. And then the next thing is like, we have Instagram stories. There's different ways of, to uh, practice a public speaking to just to get started. And then the second thing is to book different places that you could speak at. In the beginning, when you don't really, when you don't have a name for yourself, you have to do things for free and just reach out to people. You know, I, I want to talk about network marketing. Um, I think I could provide a lot of value to your audience. Do you have guest speakers? And just do it as often as possible. With any skill, practice, practice, practice. So that's that's a way to get started. Yeah, I agree with you. Just go. If you want to be a good speaker, speak. If you want to be a good swimmer, swim, right? As simple as that. So where can you speak? You speak everywhere. You speak in your gatherings, you know, friends. You speak in your church community, you speak in schools, you speak in colleges, you speak in Toastmaster. All you have to do is speak, speak, and speak. And all, all, all the while when you're speaking everywhere, every time have somebody to give you a critical feedback and have somebody who is genuine and who cares and gives you a you know, straight feedback. So you will improve like that. 
Toastmaster is the best place to become a good public speaker because there is like-minded community and community plays a huge, huge role because, you know, you can stand on the street and, you know, give motivational speech. Nobody's going to pay attention to you, appreciate you. But if you do that in a Toastmaster community, people will give you appreciation and good critical feedback because that's where the like-minded community is. So mm -hmm. join Toastmasters, uh, speak at different places, uh, practice, you know, record yourself, re-record. And as Lily mentioned that, you know, do it small, you know, start from 30 seconds. That's fine. I remember unlocking Lily episodes. I saw a few episodes in the beginning. Evan was putting together. Um, so that's how Lily started. That's how I started. I just started doing small, small things. And someday you will definitely, uh, you know, become a good public speaker. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's all practice. I'm very different now than I was when I first started the Unlocking Lily series, completely different. So it's all practice, it's all practice. And deliberate practice is what you were saying. That's um, that's important too, is um, getting that feedback from a mentor or Toastmasters. Yeah, yeah. All right, so last question of the day um, comes from Dharmendra Gohil. He says, Dave, I wanna start my IT company, but not sure how to start, what kind of, um, failure I have to study. I know first five years are very crucial to survive. Uh, if you want to start an IT company and you don't know where to begin, I would start by working for an IT company to, uh, and then try to go for a smaller, more of an entrepreneurial type company. So that way you could learn from the ground up and see if you actually like it. And you could, you could learn while getting paid and not really risking it all. But if you already have worked for an IT company, you really want to do it. Is um, I would I would model the masters. I would see who has um, created an IT company and what have they done, so I could actually model my path with it. So that's that's how I would start with the IT company. Yeah. Oh. So he has been working. Okay. Yeah. He has been working for an IT company for fifteen years. Yeah. So let, let me just you know share my thoughts. So. Look, first of all, you need to decide, hey, why do you want to start an IT company? You know, it's just because everybody is doing IT and, you know, you are from IT doesn't mean that, you know, you should start an IT company. Maybe you want to open a restaurant. You know, you never know. So the question is, why do you want to start an IT company? Mm -hmm. Once you have that why, then you need to identify, hey, what is it, what kind of problem do I want to solve for the organization? Then... Who do you want to solve the problem for specifically? You know, what is your target? You know, which is your ideal clientele? And based on all that, and then you say, okay, what skill do I have or what skill do I need to acquire to start an IT company? So once you have that thinking, you have that clear, again, trust me, no matter how prepared you are, no matter how much, you know, um, how much you study the failure, nobody can beat the uh, inevitable, right? There will be few things they will go down, but you will figure things out. So don't get bogged into, hey, I need to study the failures. Don't study the failures. Study your business model, study why you want to do it, who you want to do it for, and then just do it. You know, do it parallel to what you're doing. Register the company in your wife's name. Don't register in your name if you don't want to show <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you did, Deb? Oh, that's funny. Oh. No, <laughs> but that's, that's one way I know to be done. I had never had a problem with my company, so I didn't have to okay. problem. But okay. the thing is, don't lose on one stream of income till you have something coming from the second yeah. company, and that's how you start the business. So you you know you will definitely make mistakes, but you will grow fast. So don't uh, you know don't do uh, analysis paralysis, you know, and uh, just don't procrastinate just because of that. Just get started, right? Get the ball rolling. So start making something, do something, talk to people, ask them, hey, do you face this problem? You know, the best thing to start is, hey, reach out to the companies that you want to solve the problem for. Tell them, hey, this is the problem I've seen people facing. Do you face the same problem? If so, would you be willing to invest in certain business product? Say, yes. Okay. And talk to other 50 people. Then you have the market data. Then you work and solve that problem and then keep refining the product. Like when Apple launched the product, it was not good. It had so many flaws. You know, they would have failed if they would have not fixed it or they would have not worked on it and pushed it out on the market. They would definitely fail. But they cannot fail if they push the product out and they keep building the product while they get the feedback. So listen to your client, 
fix the problem, you cannot fail. Yeah. All right. I love it. I love it, Deb. Yeah. Good session. Uh, good session. Good. Question. I know. Really good questions. Really good session. Yeah. Great session. So, guys, thank you so much for tuning. I think Lily has to go. She has one more live. So. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining. This is your friend, Dave Gutby and Lily Ma. We come live every week. If you have any questions, leave the questions in the YouTube uh, video or in our WhatsApp group. And we will see you until next week. Lily, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Love more. Give more. Have more fun, man. <laughs> Take Bye. care. Bye.